Ho! You awake? Ho, ho, ho. You think so, right? But that's what the... I was, I was half expecting Kim to do that, actually, this morning, right? That first word there in our, in our reading for this morning, right? Is what? Ho! ho. So is that where Santa got his laugh? I got no's and yes. I have no clue. I'm not even... Actually, if you watch um, Santa Claus is coming to town, he got his laugh from the seals. Right? The seals taught St. Nicholas how to laugh. You need... If you haven't... Who hasn't seen it? A year, who has seen A Year Without Santa Claus? Santa Claus is coming to town. San, who has seen Santa Claus is coming to town? That's... You, some of you people need to... You, I have it. I'll let you borrow it. We'll put it on rotation. You need to see it. But anyway, ho! It's more of a, hey! Listen, right? The prophet is trying to get these people's attention. And why? What's important about what we can say Isaiah, although we'll find out here in probably a few moments that it's probably not Isaiah, saying to these people. And when is he saying this, right? The book of Isaiah is 66 chapters long and was written over a two to three hundred year period. Some people will say it wasn't written by the same person. And I would be one of those people. I think actually Isaiah is a three part book that was put together to give us some hope and some understanding about who God calls us to be. The first 39 chapters, Isaiah 1 through 39, is actually written by the prophet Isaiah. And they're given to a people who are getting ready to be taken into exile and need an assurance that God is always going to be with them. And then you get chapters 40 through 55. What chapter did we read today? 55. It's important. Remember that is second Isaiah, which is a which is a book written to those who are in exile to give them hope and comfort. Who said that? Nice. Hope and comfort. And then third Isaiah is chapter 56 through 66. Written a little bit later after everyone has returned from exile. Some would even say that this last chapter here, chapter 55, was written to a group of people that was both and, right? Some of them had already returned and some of them were still waiting to return. So it's a kind of a, of a, of a middle of the road kind of book. It, but it still gives us hope and comfort. And what do we need today? Hope and comfort. Right? We're waiting for a baby to come. We don't even have a major scene up here. Where's Jenny? Jenny. Next week. Next week. <laughs> She's afraid I'm going to be like, oh, what is that doing in here already? <laughs> right? We're waiting for this baby who's going to come and bring us hope and comfort. Right. So here in our reading, we have the prophet telling the people not to worry about what you're going to eat or what you're going to get, because everything that you need is going to be provided for you. Right. It says come and buy should be come and acquire wine and milk without money or price and get bread and don't labor for anything that doesn't satisfy. And listen, because God is going to give you everything that you need. He's going to be there with you all the time. He's going to make with you an everlasting covenant. Like the covenant that I made with David. And who is David? Who's David? He's the second king of Israel. And is David alive when Isaiah is writing this? No. David's been gone for a long time. He's been dead for a long time. Yet still, Israel is holding on to the hope of the everlasting covenant that was given to David. Because God said to David, someone from your lineage will sit on this throne forever and will bring peace. And they're holding on to that. And, I, and this prophet points it out to them. Listen, 
I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David, as I made him a witness to people and a leader over everybody. And and when you do this, nations will come. People that you don't know are going to come flocking because they're going to see the hope that you have in me. And they're going to want to know about it. And they're going to come running to you to find out about it. Things are going to happen. Because God is always going to be there. But what do we need to do in that process? We need to look for God while he can be found or while he is near and forsake our unrighteous thoughts and ways and return to God. And God will do what? What does it say right there in verse seven? That, the, that he will have mercy on them and our God will abundantly pardon if we but seek out the Lord, right? Because then he goes on to say, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts as the heavens are higher than the earth. So my thoughts are higher than your thoughts and my ways are higher than your ways. Did you catch all that? I think he's trying to confuse us. Let me sum that up. Isaiah, my ways for dummies, it's for me, not for you, right? (laughs) Is God's ways are different than yours, so you need to give up your ways. God does things differently than you do. And God does things, and I'm saying this to me, not to you, right? If I can't, I can't really look at myself. So, and I don't want to turn my back on you. So, right? What you want God to do is not what God is going to do. God's going to do what God's going to do. And you need to give up what you want him to do and come along with where God wants to take you. Right? Because God's ways are better than ours. Even when we think that we know the best way to do this, God has a better understanding. And God's going to lead us through all of this. And that's what he gets this prophet to actually understand. You see, I said earlier that the, this is chapter 55, which is the last chapter of which part of Isaiah? The second part. And it's important that this is the last part. And the very last few verses here are super important. Because when this prophet comes on the scene, you get God telling him back in book. Does anybody remember what book it starts in? So you can go home and read it later this afternoon, right? There's nothing happening at noon today, right? (laughs) 40. Chapter 40. Actually, verse 6 of chapter 40 says, A voice says to the prophet, and this is an angel or someone speaking to him, A voice says, Cry out! And I said, what shall I cry? But the problem here is the word here for cry is actually the word translated almost everywhere else as preach. So what the person is actually saying to this prophet is a voice says preach. And the prophet says to him, what should I preach? And why do we preach? Why do we tell people about the love of almost every Sunday? These kids come up here and I say something to them. And in the prayer, what is one thing I almost every Sunday say during the prayer? Help me. Help me do what? Share your love with the world. Right. And why do we share God's love with the world? Why do we try to do anything? Right. Because when we try to do something, what happens? What are you doing with my blanket? When we try to do something, what normally happens? Or what can happen? Not normally happens, but what can happen? I heard it. Say it louder. We fail. How many of you have ever done something and done it wrong? How many of you didn't do something because, don't raise your hand on this one. How many of you didn't do something because you thought you wouldn't be able to do it and therefore you didn't do it? There's this great movie out in the theaters right now. If you haven't seen it, you should probably go see it. I don't think it's the best one out of the series of the movies, but it's still worth going to see. 
Does everybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Right, Star Wars, right? I'm not going to spoil anything. I actually had planned to, to actually spoil part of the movie for you if you hadn't seen it yet, but I'm not going to do that. But there's a scene in there that talks about failure. And how we need to share our failures with the world. Because you see, God has called each and every one of us to lay hold of his promises. To lay hold of the promises that this prophet here in the second Isaiah in chapters 40 through 55 tells all of the world. And that is that God is always going to be with you. And no matter what the circumstances are that you're going through, there's always hope. And God is always going to be there for comfort. And God is calling you to go out into the world and to preach. And why is he calling you to do that? And what is he calling you to preach? He's calling you to tell the people about his love. He's calling you to tell them about this baby that's coming in the manger. He's calling you to go out and share what he has given with you with them so that they can understand exactly how much God loves you and exactly how much God loves them. And why do we do this? Knowing that half of, half the time or more that the people are going to look at us and scoff. They're going to look at us and they're going to laugh at us or they're just going to turn around and walk away. Why do we do this? For the same reason that this prophet was told to do this, and it took him 55 chapters to figure it out. But he finally figured it out. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return until they have watered the earth, they can bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I propose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. God needs you to go and tell the world, not because people are going to hear it the first time, but because God has told you to go and tell them. And God is going to work in and through that. And the word that God sends out into the world is not going to return void. God's word always does what it needs to do. That's why we need you to go. That's why we need you to share. That's why we need you to live in hope and comfort and understand that no matter what we do, no matter how, times, how many times we think we fail, we haven't. Because we're doing exactly what God has called us to do. To be His light in the world and to make it be a bright light. Don't worry about failing. Because all of us have. And all of us will again. But boldly go and share what God has given you to share. Because that's exactly what the world needs.